everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our continuing series, The Tech Deep End, where I take a look at some bigger problems that I'm currently working on and talk you guys through the process of what I'm trying to do. And today we're working on converting the Konami M2 games to run on the 3DO Panasonic M2 kiosks because they are interchangeable. But before we get too far involved, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. We really appreciate your guys' support. And the main reason we want to do this is because the arcade hardware is quite rare, and so are the kiosks, but the fact that the games are the exact same executables means that there's not much holding us back in trying to get these games to boot. But if we put Tobey Polystars, a Konami M2 game, in the Panasonic 3DO M2 kiosk, the FZ35, it attempts to boot. And it has a certain light pattern that shows you what it's trying to do. But after it attempts to boot the launchme.m2 file, it fails. Now if we put something like IMSA Racing in, which was made for the 3DO M2, which this kiosk basically is just a square box version of it, it will load up. You'll see that the disc does start to read there, that yellow light's on, and then we're going to get a little bit of a flash right before it starts to execute data. It flashes twice, and then it just starts reading the disc. And those lights are actually telling us certain things about what's going on, because depending on what type of disc you put into that kiosk on the left, you're going to get different lighting patterns. The manual never tells Tells you what they are but if you just pay attention to them you can kind of figure it out there's no controller plugged in so it won't boot but if i put just a basic music cd into the kiosk weirdly there's not anything in the bios that allows a cd to boot and play music that's kind of odd but you'll see here that light comes on and it's just going to sit there and it's going to go off that means as far as i can tell that it can't find anything to actually attempt to load or to actually load. Now if we take a look at the lights from left to right on the Konami M2 side, you're going to see it flashes once and then goes dead. Versus the 3DO M2 side launching IMSA Racing, once it finds the LaunchMe M2 and succeeds in executing it, you get multiple flashes. Now if we take a look at the variants on discs, the one on the right is made for the kiosk and it boots perfectly fine. IMSA Racing was made for the 3DO M2 and it boots fine, but the Konami M2 discs attempt to load but fail pretty quickly. And if we take a look at the contents of the disc, we're going to understand why. On the right, you have Tobey Polystars for the Konami M2, and on the left, you have IMSA Racing for the 3DO M2. And the big difference is that the system and system.m2 folders on IMSA Racing are completely missing from the Tobey Polystars disc. Those system folders contain drivers and folios that bring a lot of the hardware from the 3DO M2 online, where in the arcade variant, most if not all of those operations are done from the BIOS chip. The BIOS of the Konami M2 is double in size compared to the 3DO M2, and it's just down to how they added in those features. But without those folders, it's never going to run. So basically, that's what we've learned. The 3DO M2 discs have a system folder with drivers, and the Konami M2 discs do not rely on them. So even if the kiosk sees the LaunchMe.M2 executable, when it doesn't find those system folders with the different drivers and folios contained within, it's going to halt execution of the code and basically flash once, saying there's an error. If we take a look at that other 3DO M2 disc I showed, the driver training software, it also has those same system folders. And if we go through and look at the hex between the two of them, most of the system structure is still the same, but that Iron Blood beta executable that I've shown on the channel before has some differences, and that's just based on what the target was. When you take a look at the arcade hardware here, 99% of it is exactly the same. That top board is going to just be the same hardware that's in the kiosk. But as we boot it up, it does some different things and checks some different things that we're going to have to deal with to make sure that it doesn't fail loading that launchme.m2 executable into the game. Because when we put in a total vice here and you see that it's now loading, it's going to go through an 11k check and then it's going to go through a 7k eat ROM check and then the last thing it's going to check is the mask ROM at 8q. And those are the three checks that are never going to work on the kiosk because those chips don't really exist within them nor does what they're looking for. That's a BIOS check and a security check. And what we need to do is deal with those things as well. That 11K is going to be the Konami Custom IC that handles moving all the video, data, and inputs around. That 7K is a security ROM, and the 8K is the main BIOS, which is obviously going to be different on the kiosk because it's a different BIOS completely. So we need to deal with those checks and rebuild the system folder onto Tobey Polystars or another Konami M2 game to try to get it to load. And taking a look at the board here, you're going to see that custom Konami chip in yellow, you're going to see the BIOS in blue, and that security EEPROM in red. And the way the security EEPROM works, we've discussed in videos before, but it just does a little bit of hex data checking to make sure it's correct. 
But the good thing is we do have an SDK installation that we can use and we're able to recompile disks. Because if we just take the assets off the disk for Tobey Polystars and put them in a custom take me folder, we can use the layout tool to be able to create a new 3DO M2 formatted disk with those correct system folders in there. I apologize for the quality of my PowerBooks output. It's as a video, that's as good as it can do. So that's what we're dealing with here. But what we can do is recompile any 3DO M2 disk in the SDK to get it up and running. And we're just gonna use that lay tool command, which we've discussed in a video before. And that allows us to put any files from any M2 release into a custom folder and re-export it out so that it's being designed to run on a 3DO M2. Obviously with the SDK, the intent was that to run on a console and that never came out, but the kiosk hardware is so close that we are able to actually run betas of 3DO M2 games. And now you'll see here, as we're taking a look at that newly rebuilt disk, we do have those system folders in there now. On the left, you're taking a look at Tobey Polystars, and on the right, you're taking a look at Iron Blood, that beta we talked about, and we've at least rebuilt those system folders. So now technically, maybe it will succeed at booting even though we have to deal with those checks because are those checks going to halt execution and what we're going to find out very quickly is yes we still have to deal with the 8k the 11k and the 7k check and remove that from the code at some stage to be able to make these games boot and i am working on this with another person named fixel from the 3do discord so hopefully and he's way smarter than i am at this we are able to get this working because tobe polystars is an absolutely awesome game and what the end goal of a project like this would be to be able to have these arcade games to boot on the kiosk hardware and to get 3do m2 software booting on the arcade hardware because if they're rewritten in a certain way to deal with the specific chips on there it should be possible to interchangeably boot 3do m2 software to the arcade boards and vice versa and considering the kiosks are even rarer than the arcade boards, it may open up M2 to more people. And we're certainly working on it. There's going to be some hurdles, things like two of the games are light gun games, so even if we get them to boot on the kiosk, there really isn't any input that we can plug a light gun into. Is it possible to find the signals and do something in hardware? Absolutely, I'm sure it's possible. Will we get around to it? Maybe. I don't know that I want to be soldering to my particular kiosk because I can't just really replace it. But games like this are so awesome and this hardware is so rare. Doing whatever we can to get it running for more people and on more hardware is going to be awesome. But that's the plan. Thanks so much for watching. If you do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like, and subscribe. We really appreciate your guys' support. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I'm happy to answer them. But we will be back on Sunday and Tuesday with more games. And if and when we succeed at this conversion, I will definitely put an updated video up about how we did it. Short of that, bye-bye.